So I'd like to share with you one of my favorite rifles. This is a Wasser 10. It's an AK-47 variant. Made in Romania. Um, I've added some upgrades to it that I'd like to showcase here. Because I think they really are cost-effective upgrades that you can easily do to your AK rifle that I think you'll be very happy with. So let's start at the muzzle, and we'll work to the rear. So the muzzle brake I have on this rifle is the Tapco AK slot muzzle brake. It has these distinctive top slots, which in my experience really help to reduce muzzle rise, and it also has uh, side holes. They're on both sides. Now, some AKs, in particular Wassers, they'll have undersized muzzle threading. And you'll need to put some uh, high strength Loctite on those threads, and it, it won't wiggle loose after you do that. It's, this uh, muzzle brake has been on there for probably 500, at least, rounds. And it's still nice and snug. Doesn't wiggle around on me or anything. So, moving back is the front sight tower. Now, that is the stock front sight tower, but I had to uh, straighten it out. It came with a cant, and uh, which is not entirely uncommon for Wasser 10s. You know, if, if you have your pick, pick the one that you don't have to straighten out. But it's it's not a big deal to straighten out. There's two pins that you have to punch out. And then you just give it a tap, and it'll straighten out for you. And then you punch those pins back in. And you could do this in your garage if, if you had a punch. I should, I should say a press. Yeah, you need a, a punch and a press to do that. But... Those tools are not expensive, easy to mount in your garage. You could do that. The handguard I have on this rifle is a Midwest Industries uh, quad rail or tri rail, depending on how you have it outfitted. Uh, in, this, in this configuration, it's a tri rail. There's a rail on each side and one below. I have it outfitted with the uh, 30 millimeter ML2 top cover, which allows you uh, to co-witness the sights the, uh, with the irons. So the iron sights will sit close to the bottom, but maybe up, like about a, uh, they say within a third uh, of the bottom. So uh, unlike an AR-15 uh, or a similar rifle you don't have to flip up your sights they're they're always there kinda in the bottom of of your vision and all you need to do is drop your eyeball just you know less than a centimeter to get that uh, that iron sight picture so it's a great uh, a great uh, front hand guard uh, top of the line I mean it's really you can't find any, anything better out there uh, it's only $149.95 from the manufacturer. And uh, unlike some of the other handguards like the UTG, which I have tried, uh, this setup does not interfere with the gas tube. So there's no, there's no tension uh, with the barrel and the gas tube. So I actually found that I got a increase in accuracy over, uh, some, over the UTG handguard. Uh, I, my groups went from about three inches to two inches. So that is another positive side effect of this handguard. The optic I have on this rifle is an Aimpoint Comp C3. It has a two minute of angle dot. The manufacturer claims a battery life of 50,000 hours at a setting of seven out of 10. And I want to say that the uh, setting 7 out of 10 is bright enough to shoot 
outside on a sunny day. I have used it for that. It is, it is a useful 50,000 uh, hours of battery life, which is impressive. Um, the the price for these uh, I found them for four hundred and thirty seven dollars at at Midway so it's it's a it's a pricey optic but it's it's very high quality you're not you're not gonna find anything but name point that has this kind of battery life I mean it's very high quality so you're you're getting a lot for what you pay The sling I have on this rifle is a VTAC two-point sling from Viking Tactics. These are $34.95, and uh, there's a 5.11 version for $44.99. And I, I reconfigured this sling uh, for my own personal use uh, because I didn't like the way this cleat here comes up into your armpit. Uh, on the standard... Uh, VTAC sling, you pull this piece out, which adjusts it, with, which adjusts it, and the the sling is flipped around. So the you pull this this here, and the cleat comes up into your armpit. It's it's sometimes hard to reach, and I don't like trying to find this cleat every time I want to loosen my sling. So I flipped it around. Attached it uh, to this uh, this Air 15 style uh, sling swivel here that attaches to the Picatinny rail, and I got some uh, one-inch nylon webbing uh, from Joanne Fabrics for a couple bucks, and I sewed this together. I put a little loop on the loose piece to keep it all together, and I attached it to the buttstock there. I swapped out the wood buttstock that came on this for the Tapco T6 collapsible stock. Uh, its MSRP is $49.99. It's US made. It's very easy to install. You just unscrew the old stock from the screws here in the tang and then you pound it out. You, you have to beat on it a little. The old one. You have to beat on the old one to get it out. And then you just screw it in. And it fits nice and snug. Uh, into the receiver and this particular model is for stamped receivers only they make one for mill receivers too um, the the stock itself happens to be a little wiggly on the tube but you know I don't really notice that shooting it um, I don't know it's a fit and finish issue if you want you can take this stock off and then replace a, a mil spec buffer tube uh, style AR-15 stock on here. I've done that. Uh, I've tried it before. I haven't really cared to upgrade that, but it's something you could do if you wanted to. So one last accessory that I want to show you on here is these uh, 75 round drum mags. The Chinese style, I think, are better than the Russian style. This particular one is made in Romania, but it is uh, Chinese style. They're really easy to load, and you can keep them fully loaded with 76 rounds. Uh, they say they're 75 round, but you can actually fit 76 in there. Um, yeah, they're really easy to load. You pop them open, load your rounds in, load three more in the neck, um, and then you just leave them like that. And then when you're ready to use them, just crank that key. You gotta crank it a couple times, but uh, once once the spring tension is in there, it's ready to rock, just like that. And that's that's a great way to increase the firepower of your AK. Other than that, uh, that's it. So if you have any questions or comments, go ahead and leave them below the video. I'll try and answer them. Thanks.